Kia ora whanau and welcome to another episode of Get a Job and Get Healthy with Costas Enterprises. I am your host Alex Costas as always and today yeah got some news and I thought I'd uh, put out there um, and just give you you know my idea my thoughts and what's going on and all that sort of stuff. So first of all, let's get everything out of the way. Uh, first and foremost, there is a, you can find me on all of my socials at the Kiwi Don. Uh, you can also find me, so that's on Twitter and Instagram. You can find my uh, website at www.costasenterprises.business.blog. Uh, you can also find uh, me and my partners, or sorry, my partner and I's uh, candle business at www.unyengarden.com. That's a-N-Y-E-N-G-A-R-D-E-N uh, dot com, so Un-Yen Garden, uh, where we sell 100% pure coconut wax candles. Um, so, what are we going to talk about? Well, I have been, just recently, the reason why I've been pretty quiet on here is... I was waiting for a decision. So I am currently in a government job. You guys know, I've already told you this. And I work as a, what we call a capability technical trainer. Um, I'm a technical trainer because I teach people how to use things like Microsoft products and video conferencing and all that sort of stuff as well. And I have just been through a one person, one branch restructure uh, which basically means that I was the only person that was up for um, up for review everyone else in my team and my branch was not affected uh, so it very much feels like you know I was slightly targeted and I thought I didn't want to say anything until a decision had been made and then I'll sort of tell you a little bit about the process and you know what happens and you know like I don't like to glamorize it like I used to love being a government employee you know back in the days I've been working for the government almost 20 years and back in the days you, your job was pretty safe it was pretty secure you didn't have to worry about much but in the last sort of 10 years it's gotten a lot worse uh, there are a lot more restructures there's a lot more you know disestablishing of roles, re-establishing of new roles, and basically making a lot of workers pretty much work more for, I wouldn't say less, but with less capacity around you, basically. Making things a little bit harder, of course. And so I found myself the victim of one of these, uh, as I said, uh, uh, basically a one-person, one-branch uh, restructure. So no one else in my entire branch uh could comment um, uh, or um, even provide feedback about the disestablishment of my role. Uh, now, as I said, I do teach people on how to use Microsoft and all that sort of stuff. And the ministry sort of thought that uh, my role is not really something that can be done or shouldn't be needed to uh, that. And that basically, uh, instead of what has happened, uh, of me teaching people that people can find this stuff on their own. And look, I, I you know, can't argue with that. Uh, there's been a low uptake of my courses and everything that I've been taking. Um, I won't get into the exact logistics of, you know, the arguments that we had and where I thought I was right versus where I thought they were right and where they thought, thought they were right and where I thought they were wrong. Uh, but I just thought I'd tell you about the process and, you know, just give you a bit of guidance about what to do if you find yourself in the same sort of situation. Um, so usually what happens is when you're going through a restructure, and again, in this instance, it's a one-person restructure, but in most situations, if you do go through like a, a, and it's not even a government job, this is like all jobs, if you go through a restructure, Usually what is supposed to happen is you're supposed to be given a time for consultation and you will put your comments, uh, you get given sort of the brief or the consultation document and it will say, hey, this is what we propose and then from that proposal they will then go into, uh, you know, 
you'll get a chance to consult. And then from there, then uh, they will take your your comments in, look at your considerations, and then sort of do a weighing and balancing. And then from there, they will then go into the actual uh, proposing of what it is that's being done, um, and they will make their decision. Uh, so in this instance, um, because it was a one-person uh, restructure, unfortunately, it means that no one else uh, is able to put a submission in but myself. And these do happen. You do get them sometimes where you, you know, like I, I very much feel like to a degree I was semi-singled out because no one else was really um, being looked at, but I was. So it, it does feel a bit sad, but at the same time, it is what it is. It happens. So, yeah, I, I was told, hey, we don't believe, we, we believe your, your role is no longer really relevant um, and that, you know, you got to go, you know, I can go through a restructure and they have no potential roles for me to go into. They also have no other jobs. So usually when you're a, so for me, I'm a union member, means I'm a part of what they call the PSA. Uh, the PSA is the Public Services uh, Association. And it's a union where if something happens, they're supposed to help you and basically go through the whole process with you. And I, I you know, I have been a, a member of the union for almost 20 years. Basically, as soon as I started working for the public service, uh, for the government, I joined a union. And I have never left the union. I've always been on it. Um, so, yeah, it's... Uh, you know, they, they, they um, so I got told, you know, we don't believe this is your thing. You're welcome to have a support person and all that sort of stuff, um, which is usually what they do. They, you know, most, most employers, if you do have a union in place, they do say, look, if you need a support person, you can have a support person before you even have your initial discussion, uh, before you know what is going on. So in this instance, I had a, I had an inkling that they could be looking at something like this, but um, I didn't have anything confirmed until the actual day. And then they sort of said, hey, look, we're, we're looking at reviewing your position. Um, this is the reason why. This is the reason that we feel like, you know, it wouldn't matter. And now we're going to give you a chance to respond. So as I said, because I was a one-person restructure, only I was allowed to respond for myself. Now, this is not, this is, apparently this is normal. Um, the other times that I've been part of a restructure, it's been one of these situations where anybody can put a submission in. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I put my submission in, and I made it about four or five pages about why I feel that their their ideas um, about why my role is still valid, uh, and sort of went against their original ideas, and you know provided information and further clarity around that as well. Um, about why I feel, you know, there is a need for my role, or at the very least for um, what I'm doing, basically. Uh, and then, so I had two weeks to draft that, create that, so I did that. Um, I wrote my submission, I checked it with my union delegate, um, and then when all was decided, I sent it in. Um, they usually give you, usually you get about two to three weeks, depending on your situation, and... Um, if you are in sort of a restructure where it's more than sort of one person affected, uh, everyone can put a submission in, and usually we're talking, yeah, at least two weeks um, for you to put your submission in. Um, I do encourage you, if you are in the same sort of position, do put your your submission in, put your, you know, put in one for your team, if your team is affected, um, have other people put submissions in as well, all those sorts of things as well, because everything that you provide may provide more of an instance. Now, the main thing you have to remember when you are going through something like this, the decision is not already made. Now, I'll be honest, I kind of felt that the way that I was being singled out, that it was very, very clear that the decision had been made and that they were just following what we call the red tape. Um, I can't confirm nor deny whether or not that is actually what happened. Of course, I have no evidence of it. Um, it's just a personal feeling. And, and part of that feeling is the feeling that I have of being slightly betrayed because, as I've said, I've worked for this particular part of the government for 15 years. And, you know, I just feel that, you know, I've I've given quite a bit for this and it was a bit of a disrespect um, for what it is that's happened. Um, 
That said, I'm not saying that it was predetermined before they had my consultation, but it just feels a bit like that, just to me personally. <clears throat> that said, put my consultation in, I did my two weeks, and then uh, they usually have a week to decide, or maybe two weeks, depending on how big the restructure might be. So if you're doing like an all of government restructure, or you might be doing an all of team restructure, they will take probably a little bit longer than one week, but because they were only dealing with one person in this instance, one week is sufficient time for them to read the document, have their considerations with the other, you know, senior leadership teams and all that sort of stuff, which they have to do. The main thing to remember is when you are dealing with something like a restructure, especially in a government environment, um, it's not just, it's not your manager that's making that decision, okay? The decision is being made by more than one person, okay? So uh, they put their case forward, it then goes to a higher level, and the higher levels then make their discussions as well. Once that's been done, um, you have a meeting, and then they go, right, this is the decision. At all times when you are going through one of these sorts of restructures, you do get written uh uh, 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 something written basically saying, "Hey, this is what we're proposing. This is what you're doing." So you're not you're not just doing it by uh, via voice. If you're just doing it via voice, you ask for something written, uh, and you provide provide a document or provide a letter uh, explaining what it is that you're going through. That way, you've got evidence of that. So yeah, the decision came back that that my job was going to be disestablished, and they don't need my role anymore. Now, because I am with the government and I am with the PSA and I am also, uh, I have now been told that my last day would effectively be, you know, a month from the day that I had my actual final discussion. Um, so I, I, I've now got, you know, a couple of weeks before I have to leave my job. Um, I don't have to worry about putting in a actual um, resignation letter. Um, but I am working my full four weeks because, you know, I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm not ending on bad terms. This is what it is. And then in my case, um, in some situations, you will have what they call affected status. So for me, I have affected status for a month from the day that I got given the final decision. You might be like, well, what is affected status? Affected status is basically... Um, you get priority when you're applying for new jobs within your, you know, government, department, whatever, um, that you will get looked at. Because the whole point is they don't want to disadvantage you. Um, at the end of the day, they don't want to displace you. They don't actually want to get rid of you because, one, that means them paying you out um, for redundancy, which, you know, in some instances can be pretty expensive. And in other instances, you know, it's like, you know, they, they are required... Um, to actually try to find you uh, a job with while you are and while you have uh, affected status. And then if you don't find a job during that time, then, you know, unfortunately you have to get the redundancy and go from there. So in my situation, I, I have affected status. And I, while I haven't yet started looking for jobs, I will probably start in the next couple of days and see where I can find anything within the ministry where I am. Uh, and... Yeah, I, I, if it's not something that I feel I can do, then I won't apply, obviously. Because if I do apply just for everything, then, you know, in the first instance, they have to take me if I can do sort of 70% of the job. Uh, and I am I may not be the best candidate uh, for that role, but they have to take me because I'm affected, uh, affected status, which means that I just get that little bit more priority. Now, is that a good thing? Yes and no. So the role that I'm currently or was currently doing, uh, let's put it that way, um, I actually got that because at that time I also had affected status. Um, so I've never been through the full redundancy where, you know, you get paid paid out and all that sort of stuff. So I'm, I'm trying to find another job and I will keep trying to find another job, hopefully within government because, you know, I don't really want to leave this this ministry that I'm working for. Um I don't really want to leave the government until I at least hit my 20 years, which won't be until, like, much later. Um, but at the same time, like, I, I feel a little bit hurt. Um, well, actually, okay, let's put it there. I, I feel a lot hurt. Um, as I said, I've given quite a bit to this ministry, quite a bit to the government. 
uh, that I've been working for, and yeah, it's a it's a bit of a it's a bit of a slap in the face. Now that is not saying anything against the actual government. Okay, I just want to make that very very clear. I am talking more about just the the fact that I've been here as long, and I just feel like I'm being kicked to the side. Um, again, this is personal feelings. These are this is my own personal opinion. This is not reflective of any management. This is not reflective of anything like uh, upper leadership or upper membership. That's that's. This is just the way I feel because you know I've lost my job. So you know it's like it's a bit of a shame. Um, I'm still emotional about it. But at the end of the day, I do see where they're coming from in some respect. Um, do I agree with it? Of course not. Otherwise, I, I would still love to be there. Um, so what happens after that is, yeah, you get your affected status, you apply for a job. If you apply for that job, you tick that you have affected status and they have to, they don't have to give you an interview, but if you put your CV and your cover letter in uh, and it meets some of the specs that you're doing, then they have to consider you for the interview. You don't get put at the very top of the pile usually, uh, but at the same time, you do get at least an interview to to prove if you can do the job. And then if the job comes down to me and someone else, say Mr. Joe Smith, um, if Joe Smith is a 99% um, perfect, pretty much perfect applicant, and then I'm sitting there at about 80%, um, as I mean, sorry, I mean, as to do the job and I've got affected status, then nine times out of 10, they are supposed to take me because I have affected status. Okay. I'm look, I, yes, it's good, but at the same time, it's, I, I feel bad that, you know, if I can't do the job to the full of my ability, that's basically displacing that person, if that makes sense, which sucks. And I do think that's something that is, you know, it is potentially wrong with the actual system. Um, I do, I mean, having affected status is a, it's a twofold. You either, it's either good for you or it's bad for you. If you, if you have affected status, it's good for you. If you don't, then it can hurt you. Um, but the main thing to remember is that you have to have, you have to have the actual skills to do the job. You can't just like, I can't go in and, go, now I want to be a senior business analyst earning 30k more than what I'm doing at the moment and expect that job. Like, you have to prove that you have the skills. So it is fair in that respect. But the the part that may or may not be so fair is, is when it comes down to the final two, if I'm there and I've got affected status and the other person's there and they don't have affected status, they're more suited for the job and I'm just a little bit less suited, there is a possibility that I get taken over because I need they they need to offer me the preferential treatment for trying to displace my original job. That said, am I going to turn it turn it down if I apply for anything? Am I going to say no? Of course not. I've got affected status. This is this is the one way that they are trying to go. Hey, look, we're sorry you're losing your job, but this is what we're doing instead. So. Yeah, uh, and then, you know, you would apply for the job as you would normally, and, you know, you'd still get your CV, your cover letter, you'd still be selected whether you go through there or not. You don't automatically, as soon as you get affected, get an interview, okay? I want to make that very, very clear. You still have to show in the initial steps that you meet the role of the actual job. So that means that you can do the skills and all that sort of stuff. One good thing uh, that is coming out of this, unfortunately, is... I am going to be able to revamp all of my um, CVs, cover letters, and all that sort of stuff, which I'll be able to tell you guys a little bit more about that stuff. I'm having a meeting over the next couple of weeks uh, with an actual trained recruitment person, and so I'm going to see what I can pick up from them and you know, give it my own flair and then put it out to you guys as well so that you guys can get a job as well. Uh, if I don't make the four weeks, I, I've actually, you know, on I, I've got about four weeks from last week um and then you know i will have effectively if i don't get a job during that time then i will have what they call redundancy so what is redundancy well redundancy is basically a lump sum uh of your you know based on your employment agreement uh and in my case my collective employment agreement because i'm part of the union and it it may be based on certain 
requirements, like how long you've been there. Usually you don't get paid out. If you're sort of less than sort of three, six months, it's very unlikely that you're going to be paid out anything. If, you know, you may get paid out your annual leave um, if you've earned any, but as for, for terms of service, it would all depends on what it is that you're actually going through, basically. So, sorry for that text message. Um, so, in my case, as I said, I've been there 15 years. Now, my collective agreement means that I would get paid one month of my salary for every year of service up to the maximum of 12, so a full year. So, if I do, you know, well, no, I, I don't say if I do get made redundant because I am being made redundant, but if I am unable to find a job with the affected status during this time, then, you know, nine times out of ten, what's going to happen is I will, um, unfortunately, um, I will have to leave the ministry, but I would be getting paid roughly 12 months of my service. So, yeah, it's... um. I, I, I am in a, a, a bit of a stew of emotions and I have wanted to record this the whole time, like going through the process, but I thought I'll wait, get the actual decision, um, let it sit in my mind a couple of days and then talk about it. Um, as I said, I am looking for other work and I will start probably tomorrow. So I will... All the things that I tell you guys, making a master CV, all that sort of stuff, I will be looking at that as well. I'll be revamping that. Um, and then looking at applying for those sorts of roles and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, however, the other thing to remember, of course, is, as I said just before, I do have that, you know, that at, at the very least, I have 12 months of payment, uh, which would be coming to me to say, hey... You know, at least I've got something so that if I don't manage to get a job, I can at least, you know, have some money to sustain myself during that time. Um, would I apply for another government job? Possibly, possibly. Um, would it be at the same ministry? Possibly. Even though I'm feeling hurt, I, I have worked there 15 years. I know it's a good place to work. Um, I may not work in the same department uh, of that ministry, but that's not to say that I wouldn't look somewhere else, basically, within the ministry. Um, and you might be like, well, hang on, can you just get the redundancy and go back? Well, not really. So you can get the redundancy and then you can take, you know, a certain amount of time off um, before you can apply for another government job. Now, that time varies based on department or ministry and all that sort of stuff, so I'm not exactly sure what the particular one is. Um, however, that's if I come back as an, as an actual employee of that ministry. If I decide to come back as a contractor, because, you know, say, say for example, in like three months' time, the ministry realizes actually there is a need for this particular type of training and I'm a contractor I can come back and I can keep the redundancy no matter how long the time is because I'm not actually employed by um, the ministry I'm employed by someone else I'm employed by myself um, and I'm just there as a contractor so that is another option um, the other thing is I can set my own prices there I don't pay what you know I don't put what they pay me and we go from there basically so that's that's that is a potential option for me. I'm looking at everything at the moment because, you know, as I said, I only have one month of of uh, affected status. And so because of that one month, I, you know, usually you have a little bit more. You might have two, three months. You might even have like six months of affected status. So you'd still be employed during that time. But in this instance... It's very clear they want to get this done with very quickly, which is why, you know, I'm sitting there for a month. Um, as I said, I will keep looking. I'm not stupid. Like, you know, I'm not going to just throw away a perfect opportunity to potentially move to a different department 
within the ministry. Um, I'm going to look, you know, I've got, I've got affected status. Um, my pride is very, very hard at the moment. And, and it is very much like, you know, I want to stay. I want to stay because as I said, I'm very close to my, I'm very close to my 20 years and I'm even closer to my, you know, 16 years working for this government, uh, for this particular department ministry. So yeah, it's, um, I'm sort of on the fence, but then at the same time, I do feel, as I said, personal, personal feelings. I personally feel hurt and part of me is like, why would I come back? So yeah, it, it, it is what it is. I, I'm sort of a, a whole range of emotions at the moment. So I don't really know what I want. Um, and I am still figuring this out. Like, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, I know what I'm going to do. I, I really don't. Um, every day I change at least three or four times. Sometimes I just think I'll take the redundancy and I'll just do this. And then other times I'm like, oh, I should get, I want to go for the job. I want to, you know, it's, it's one of those sorts of situations where I don't know where I am and I am still, you know, I'm still dealing with all the emotions. I'm still dealing with everything. But hey, look, we'll go through and we'll go, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go through the process. I'll say we'll go through the process together. We won't. I'll go through the process by myself, but I'll tell you what's coming up. Uh, um, but yeah. Until then, um, what else has been going on in my life? Well, I'm still dealing with everything and still going through, you know, um, I'm still going through everything. Uh, Mum stuff is always still there. It's always in the back of my mind. But we do what we can. Uh, I will keep... I, I will still try and put something out in the next couple of days. Um, try to put another session out. Um, I am actually currently working with other people first. Uh, I'm actually working in a different team at the moment, um, helping with uh, some emergency response stuff, which is quite cool. Um, yeah, it's it's really, really... It's really, really interesting because it's doing something different and it's showing me that I really, really enjoy this kind of work. Um, and it's making me really enjoy my current role as well uh, because I'm delivering that sort of stuff to people where I am and it's nice feeling wanted um, and when they're turning around and saying, hey, you know, this isn't working and I'm like, well, actually, I feel quite good, you know. Um, yeah. But I, yeah, I do. I feel pretty good. Um that, you know, what I am teaching does have value. Because I'll, I'll admit, when I came through this thing, I didn't feel like, I literally felt like, because I'm affected and all that sort of stuff, well, you guys know me, I'm very emotional. I felt, you know, I'm not worth it. You know, I felt down. I felt, I felt less than what I was. And so, coming into this new team and helping them and teaching them things that you know, I've been teaching everyone for the last five years and them actually making me feel valued, making me feel like I, you know, what, what I does, what I do matters. So yeah, um, it gave me a new invigoration for the role that I am doing. And even though, you know, I have been given redundancy and even though I am likely to leave, at the same time, it's made me realize that, you know, I've got a legacy and my legacy is been doing what I've been doing for the last five years. So what do I want to do? I want to leave a better legacy. I want to make sure that everyone is, you know, all sorted and I can teach people the way that they are. Um, and just teach everyone. So yeah, it's, it is what it is, um, but you know we'll 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 see how we go. As I said, I'll try to put another uh, episode out 
soon and yeah we'll just follow the process and go through with what we do until next time as always guys thank you for listening i do apologize again for the lateness of this podcast uh, but i did want to make sure what i was going through first i know i can get quite emotional sometimes and yeah i just i just wanted to basically go through everything and let you know what was going on but until next time guys i love you good luck you are my whanau for now and forever and you know you guys always support me and i really appreciate and love that support Till next time, have a good one.